This lecture is on calculations of human body impedance and the related shock currents. Within the body, the tissues with the greatest resistance are the bone and the fat, while the nerves and muscles have the least resistance. There are a lot of factors involved and not every person has the same electrical resistance. Now naturally the resistance also depends on the path that the electricity takes through the body. That is if the electricity goes in the left hand and out the right foot then the resistance will be different than if it goes in and out of adjacent fingers. So in this lecture let us see how to calculate the human body impedance. Let us first take the internal impedance of the human body. The body's internal resistance depends on the current path and it is mainly concentrated in the lower and the upper limbs. So you have the resistance of the arms and the resistance of the legs. Now um, this is because the upper and the lower limbs have a small cross sectional area with respect to the rest of the body. For example, this in the trunk part of the body, the resistance is usually negligible and in fact it is considered as a short circuit because it has a larger cross section and there is a lot of conductive fluids in it. So therefore, in calculating the internal resistance, we normally considered only the resistance of the arms and the legs and a rough value of the internal resistance of the human body is around 300 to 1000 ohms. The next one is the skin impedance. Now the majority of the body's resistance is in the skin. Depending on the person, the resistance of the dry skin is usually in the range of 1000 to 100,000 ohms. Now if you take the skin impedance which is shown by a parallel combination of a capacitor and a resistor, the skin has a capacitor in addition to the resistor. For example, if placed in contact with the piece of metal, the underlying tissue in the skin is like one plate of the capacitor and the metal surface which is being touched is like the other plate. The dry skin is the less conductive material or it acts as a dielectric in between. Now when we draw the total um, electrical circuit of the human body, we consider two skin impedances. So one skin is at the point where the current enters and it passes through the skin then through the internal body and then comes out of the other part of the body which is again through the skin. So we consider two skin impedances. Now at 50 or 60 hertz the capacitive reactance is usually extremely high so the capacitance are considered as open circuit. So under this condition the human body impedance becomes purely resistive. So at high frequency we ignore these capacitance. So the net impedance of the human body is the skin impedance plus the internal uh, resistance plus the other skin resistance. In addition, if the touch voltages are greater than 200 volts, the skin actually burns out or ruptures and no longer has any insulating role from the light paths. Therefore, for voltages um, in Australia, for example, the normal touch voltage is 240 volts and for this voltage, the human body impedance is simply the internal resistance. So for all calculations, we just ignore the skin resistance unless otherwise stated. Otherwise, we only consider the internal resistance of the human body. The skin impedance again is influenced by a number of factors like the surface area of contact, the pressure of contact. So the more pressure um, the contact has, the lesser will be the impedance the degree of moisture in the skin and also the temperature. This, so the skin's resistance is much lower 
if it is wet or if the skin is burnt. This means that when a person has an electric current passing through the body, the body's resistance drops because the skin gets burnt when the current passes through the body. And of course, the applied voltage as we saw, once the applied voltage is, is greater than 200 volts, the skin impedance is no longer valid and frequency of the applied voltage, we already saw the effect of frequency in the previous lecture and of course the duration of the current flow. So the longer the duration of current flow, the skin gets burnt more and more which means it becomes ineffective. So this table here shows the human resistance for various skin contact conditions. For example, if the contact is made with just the finger, the resistance is maximum. So, it is around 40 k to 1 mecohms. The same finger touch under wet conditions can see the resistance is much lower, maybe 10 times lower. And similarly, if we have a palm touching, the resistance decreases to a very large extent and obviously, the wet condition, the resistance are quite low. So, according to IEEE standards, the human body resistance has a constant value of 1000 ohms. So, IEEE considers the resistance to be constant and it is 1000 ohms. Uh, this is for hand to hand, hand to feet and foot to foot paths independent of the system voltage. But IEC standards consider the human body impedance as a non-linear function of the touch voltage. So now based on the human body impedance for various paths, which path is dangerous? So we here we have four different paths. This one is hand to hand and this one is hand to foot and here it is flowing from the head to the hand and from head to the foot. So head to hand, head to the foot. So of these, which is more dangerous? Obviously, we know the path where the vital organs are involved. For example, in this case, it flows through the heart. Here again, it flows through the heart. They may be more dangerous. Of course, the severity of the shock again depends upon the duration of the current as well. But just based on the human body impedance alone, let us see which path is dangerous. Let us first take the hand to hand resistance. So, we have two hands. Um, so, the current enters through this one hand, pass through that and comes out through the other hand. So, this part of the body is not involved, there is no current passing through the body. So, you have two resistances now in series. So, the total resistance will be 2 times Ri. So, the resistance is higher here. So, if the applied voltage is V, then the hum current, the shock current, let us say Is, will be voltage divided by 2 times Ri. The next one is the hand to foot. So, the current enters at that point, flows here, then flows through the trunk and then it flows through the two feet because both the feet are touching the ground. So, under this condition we have this part has one single resistance Ri and here we have two uh, lower limbs each having a resistance of Ri and they are in parallel. So, the net resistance for the lower limb is Ri on 2. So, put together the total resistance is Ri plus Ri on 2. So, you have 1.5 Ri. So, compared to the previous case which was 2 times Ri, now in this case it is 1.5 times Ri. So, that means the magnitude of the current in this case is greater than the previous case. So, let us say case 2. So, I2 is now greater than I1. So, the shock current here is greater. So, let us consider the next case where is both hands to feet. So, both hands are connected and then the current. So, therefore, if you see the shock current flows here, it separates into two parts, then it flows through the trunk and then again it separates into two parts. So, if you find this resistance, two hands in parallel, so you have Ri on 2 and then this is again Ri on 2. 
So, put together the net resistance is R i. So, we have for this case we have the minimum resistance that means the maximum shock current. So, we have the current I 3 greater than I 2 which is greater than I 1. So, the most dangerous is when both the hands and the feet are involved. Obviously, you see here that the contact area is higher. So, therefore, the resistance is lower and hence the current is greater. Okay, let us work out an example here. We need to calculate the body current due to a touch with a metal part with both hands energized at 200 volts and then we are assuming dry conditions. And the assumption here is medium area of contact for hands, large area of contact for feet. So, which is again here it is a case of two hands um, touching um, together a metal surface and then the current flows through both the hands and through the feet. So, it is both two hands and um, two feet are involved. So, this is a case, case 3. Now, some data is given here the resistance hand to hand medium area is 2.2 kilo ohms hand to hand large area is given and then hand to foot is in terms of hand to hand hand to trunk is also in terms of hand to hand. So, the resistance of different parts are given they are not equal and there is also a resistance from feet to the ground which is 1000 ohms. So, will there be ventricular fibrillation? So, when does ventricular fibrillation take place? When the current is greater than 100 milliamp. So, what we need to do is we need to first draw the human body impedance diagram in fact the resistance diagram calculate the equivalent resistance and then the voltage is 200. So, 200 divided by this equivalent resistance will give you the current. So, we need to check if the current is greater than 100 milliamps. So, let us see the what happens. So, we can draw the impedance diagram. So, you can see here it is two hands touching and the feet. So, the current flows through both the hands like this and then it separates then it flows through the trunk and then again it divides. Now, this is a medium area for the contact and large area and we also have the resistance uh, between the foot and the crown. In this case, this resistance value is um, I think it is 1000 ohms. So, this resistance is 1000 ohms. So, we need to find the resistance of the other parts. So, the, the let us say the, this uh, this um, this resistance is 50 percent of hand to trunk medium area. So, so let us consider this resistance to be R 1 for the hands both the hands have equal resistance R 1 let the lower limb resistance be R 2. Now, therefore, what will be the total resistance these two are in um, parallel. So, the net resistance here will be R 1 on 2 these two are in parallel. So, the net resistance here is R 2 on 2 and therefore, the total resistance will be sum of all the three. So, we have R 1 on 2 plus R 2 on 2 plus this R B G which is 1000. So, this will be the total resistance. Now, uh, what is R 1? R 1 is given as 0.5 times hand to hand medium area. So, it is 0.5 times hand to hand medium area let us say this is R B and because this is a medium area we need to consider hand to hand medium area. So, this case is 1.1 ohms because R B is given as 2.2. Now, let us take uh, the trunk trunk to the foot large area which is R 2. So, R 2 is given by the hand to foot large area hand to foot area minus hand to trunk area. This we need to consider a large area because R 2 is large area here. So, hand to foot minus hand to hand, hand to foot minus hand to trunk. So, 
this one is given as 0.8 hands to hand which is RB minus hand to trunk is 0.5 RB it is given in the problem. So, this one is 0.3 times RB. Now, for this RB we consider a large area. So, that gives us 0.3 times 1.275. So, which will be 0.3825. Okay. So, this one is of course, kilo ohms here. Kilo ohms. Now, therefore, uh, we need to take R1 is there, R2 is there. So, the total resistance now let us say R total will be R1 on, on 2 which is 0 0.55 plus R2 on 2 which is 0 0.191 plus 1000 ohms since these two are in kilo ohms we need to convert that into kilo ohms so which is 1. So, this we get it as 1.741 kilo ohms. So, therefore, what will be the body current? So, the body current I will now become the voltage is 200 divided by 1741 ohms. So, the body current comes to 115 milli ampere which is greater than 100 milli ampere. So, therefore, the person will suffer ventricular fibrillation. So, let us take another example. So, a person is touching a fence the fault current when there is a fault in the system. The shock voltage is 500 volts because of the fault the shock duration is 500 millisecond. So, determine the severity of the shock by estimating which region this event falls in. So, we need to find the zone. So, the zone curves are given. So, consider possible variations in the total body. So, this is based on the IEC standards that we saw. So, IEC considers that the body resistance is a non-linear curve as shown here with respect to the touch voltage. Now, the voltage uh, here is 500 volts. Now, how do we decide the resistance? So, let us draw a line from 500 volts touching the curves. It is like this. So, this touches the lower part of the curve. So, this meets at say 800, this is the impedance, so that is 800 ohms. The upper part of the curve, it touches here which is 2000 ohms. So, the human body resistance varies from 800 to 2000 ohms. So, what will be the corresponding currents? So, we have two currents, the voltage is 500 divided by the lower voltage resistance 800 will give you 625 milliampere. So, there is another current caused by the upper range of the resistance which is 500 divided by 2000. So, this current is 250 milliampere. So, we have two currents 250 milliamps, 625 milliamp and the duration of current is 500 milliseconds. We need to make use of this information to check which zone the shock falls into. So, we know that the time is 500 milliseconds. Therefore, we draw a line 500 milliseconds. So, this is the line that we need to consider. Now, one current is 250 milliampere. So, 250 milliampere is somewhere here. So, you need to note that this is um, a logarithmic curve. So, you can see here it is crumbled in the initial regions and then the gap increases as we go. So, you cannot mark 250 just in the center of um, some, it is somewhere here, it's 250 is there is a 300 division. So, 250 will be closer to here. So, let us let us draw a line from 250. So, it falls here. 
so it is in zone 4.2 so the zone here the zone here is zone 4.2 now similarly for 625 milliampere you need to draw a line so 625 milliampere is closer to 500 here so draw a line touching this one so you have the point of intersection which falls in zone 4.3 here so therefore we can see here for 4.2 this one is approximately so here you have 50 percent probability of fibrillation so 50 percent probability of ventricular fibrillation and for this one here you have greater than 50 percent ventricular fibrillation so the next part is to determine the probability of fibrillation for 500 volts 500 millisecond touch voltage wet body no footwear 50 ohm meter soil so this is the fibrillation curve for a wet body no footwear and 50 ohm meter soil so we have this figure so 500 volts and 500 milliseconds so draw the corresponding lines here again 500 uh, milliseconds so we have 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 so this is again a logarithmic graph so this goes along this line and then you have 500 volts once again 100 200 300 400 500 so the line is here so you see here it falls in this range between the brown curve and the green curve so the brown and the green curve so this is the range so the probability of fibrillation now will be between 0.6 and 